welcome to the perfume realm my name is Manah Hill and today is going to be a quick little video on Indul but before we get started I just wanted to say if you are interested in joining the realm I highly suggest clicking the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you can stay up to date on everything that is happening here when you guys subscribe to me you guys are supporting me and helping me grow and I truly appreciate every single subscriber that I have. So in one of my recent videos, I asked you guys if you would be interested in seeing a video on Indole and I got an overwhelming response of yes and several people have actually asked me when is it going up and I finally have it for you guys. And down below, I will be trying to generally cite my sources and I'll be leaving links down below from where I got that information. So I wasn't able to do like cross-referencing or anything like that but I did go ahead and read through a few articles because to me Indole is fascinating. I personally have a huge love for organic chemistry in general and Indole is an organic compound that is found in a lot of perfume because it is found in a lot of white flowers and I just think there's something almost poetic about Indole and the fact that it can be found in decomposing bodies, in fecal matter, Matter, but also in beautiful flowers that we love the smell of like narcotic flowers fragrances that are narcotic because of those flowers and then also when we get intimate with another person the smell that comes from that as well has indole in it and indole is produced by basically the majority of organisms that exist whether it's a human or a bacteria a lot of these different organisms like I said the majority do produce indole so really quick we're gonna get this kind of basic chemical chemistry out of the way. Indole is an organic compound. So an organic compound is basically a bunch of carbon atoms linking with hydrogen atoms and basically kind of creating a chain. So there's multiple carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms and that's what an organic compound is. And so organic compounds are basically found in everything and perfume is all about organic chemistry because these different compounds react with one another and create the different sense that you you know experience and also the way that the fragrance unfolds in general all of that is organic chemistry whether these compounds are coming naturally or they're being synthesized they're still called organic compounds and indole is one of them so indole is basically a cyclic structure which mean basically the carbons form together to create a type of ring there is an entire family of different compounds that basically fall under the indole category and that is because they contain the indole uh, structure that cyclic structure so one of the organic compounds that fall into the indole group is scatol and scatol is the primary cause of odor in fecal matter that scent is all due to scatol and scatol is basically that cyclic structure of indole with an extra methyl group so that's all I'm gonna get into the chemistry I just thought it was interesting and since we're talking about it I thought it would be pretty important to mention it at least and then the name of Indol actually comes from the fact that when it was first ever isolated in a lab they used indigo and oleum to basically separate the Indol and kind of isolate it so Indol when it is in high concentrations has a fecal smell and like I said in the beginning it is present in decay so a decomposing body often has different things like putrescine, cadaverin, and scatol. All of those together basically react as a body is decomposing to release that decomposing accord, basically. So what you're smelling is actually an accord of different notes coming together um, and creating that horrible smell. Now, I've never smelled a decomposing body, and I'm hoping none of you have had to deal with that either, but Again, I just think that there is something morbidly fascinating about this, but also because we are all connected to this entire system so much more than we realize. In the groin area, there is a high concentration of indole, and when we get intimate, the heat and moisture basically activates it, and the aromatic compound of indole is kind of released, and so you can attribute that smell, that skankiness, to indole. 
And then another fascinating thing about indole is that when it has been completely separated, completely isolated, and 100% on its own, it has a smell of mothballs, just kind of a vague smell of mothballs. But then, like I said, the more the concentration, the more putrid it starts to smell uh, coal tar has it by the way it is also used in the flavoring of coffee and chocolate too so you can't get away from indole as much as you want to turn your nose up to it oh that's gross you really can't run away from it it is around us all the time it is inside of us we are emitting our own aromatic indole into the air so you really can't escape it at all. So before I start to kind of introduce fragrance and in indole, I did want to say that in the little mini chemistry lecture, I forgot to say this, but I guess this kind of also falls into biology. So tryptophan is a precursor to um, serotonin and melatonin inside of us. Serotonin is the happy hormone and melatonin is a sleep hormone. At least those are the two that they're most associated with. And tryptophan is the amino acid precursor to those two hormones. And when you break down tryptophan, you find indole. When you break down tryptophan, you find indole. So even in something that makes us a little bit happy, there is indole. But us humans are not the only ones with a strange type of relationship with indole. So insects such as bees are not able to see white flowers that well. And so these white flowers such as jasmine and gardenia, they release indole so that the bees can be attracted and come pollinate. So now we're gonna turn to perfume. So one of the interesting things about indole is that it is used as a fixative a lot. And a fixative in perfume is basically an ingredient that is used to anchor other ingredients that can evaporate really easily. So it kind of slows down the process of evaporation. It also sometimes can intensify a scent. So indole does kind of have an infrastructure type of role in fragrances, but that doesn't really answer the question of when someone says, Oh, this smells so indolic. So indole has the property of smelling carnal. There's something a little bit off about it sometimes. It's something that smells a little bit overripe. There's a strange type of sweetness to it. All of those different characteristics are tied with indole. And a lot of the white flowers that I mentioned have indole in them. Most of them do. The beauty about indole is that it adds a layer of complexity and depth. It makes a fragrance super alluring. And that is why jasmine sambac, which is a morning blooming jasmine that is found in grass, is the most expensive because it has the highest level of natural indole concentration, which is 2.5%. So the jasmine over there in France, that stuff is super skanky. The indole concentration is huge. Like I said, 2.5%, which is a lot. And I'm not talking about diluted indole. It's all in there packing a punch. Of course, when you add it to perfume, it is super, super diluted. So nowadays with the incredible modern day chemistry, it is possible to separate the other white floral scents from the indole. Like you can kind of take the indole out. However, that's actually not the main goal of most perfumers. And you would think, why would we want that kind of weird scent? If you can separate it, why keep it in there? And that is because indole adds a certain layer of complexity to a scent. It makes it animalic. It makes it more of a lusty fragrance. It definitely adds that carnal kick to it, which also creates this kind of dimension. And so when you take indole away, you're left with kind of a flat type of scent, nothing exciting. And so that is why I mentioned that indole is produced synthetically nowadays because it is later on added because nowadays the purest concentration of jasmine oil is just too expensive and so it's a blessing that they found a way to create indole in a laboratory. Okay so now I'm going to start talking about some different fragrances. So when you keep the organic chemistry part of perfume in mind you do realize why certain things are talked about such as don't rub your perfume and that is because it does create a reaction. Opening notes are extremely volatile. It is very easy for those to evaporate. That's why we need fixatives such as indole. Also, when we say that, oh, I wore a fragrance out in the heat and it absolutely bloomed, 
that's because it really did bloom. It really did react with the heat and did something different. Like I said, when humans become intimate, the heat and the moisture helps that aromatic compound of indole to really like bloom and that's when you're able to smell it the most. Okay, it's time to finally bring the perfumes into the mix. So there definitely was a time when a woman was supposed to always be this put together basically a good girl and so often the fragrances that a woman wore were very light and airy they didn't have a huge sillage they were very polite fragrances so the flowers in these fragrances were often violet so over here i have vanille violet from lawrence dumont i also have naughty alice over here from vivian westwood and this is actually a new fragrance to my collection both of these feature violet. I also have Lolita Olympica over here. This also is known for its violet note. All of these, I would say, are not super seductive fragrances. These aren't fragrances that make me feel alluring. There's kind of this friendly and polite air about them. Even though this one is called Naughty Alice, I have no idea why because it is one of the most polite fragrances I have ever met. And I do love polite fragrances. They have a time and a place for me and that is why I own these. But there was a time when these are what a proper, elegant, and put together lady would wear. It was actually frowned upon for a woman to be too sultry and for her perfume to be too animalic, too carnal. But now when you look in the perfume industry, there are female fragrances from here to there and they can be super, super light and sweet and friendly or they can be very challenging, very dominating. And it's nice to live in a time that we won't be judged for the fragrances we wear. And it sounds like kind of a silly thing, like, oh, it's just a fragrance, who cares? But imagine if wearing a beautiful jasmine fragrance makes you feel like that woman and people are over here you know whispering about you behind your back it's not the best feeling in the world so now let's talk about some indolic fragrances we are going to start off with one that is very obvious in my opinion whether you love this or you hate this you do notice the certain smell of something being off in black orchid by tom ford there is definitely to me that kind of overripe type of scent that kind of sweetness that is a little bit off there's something very very sensual about it though and i think that's something that turns some people away not just the sensuality aspect but that kind of weird smell to it i find it so alluring and narcotic i would say that the main culprit of the indole in this one is the jasmine i mean when it comes to perfume marketing they know what they're doing. They know that fragrances that are indolic should be marketed as these kind of dark and sultry and mysterious fragrances because that is the feeling and uh, reaction that these type of fragrances elicit. It's just, it's how it is. It's literally the chemistry of it. It is not just in your head. It is something very real and something very earthy and anomalic and primitive about it. So when they say that the jasmine note is an aphrodisiac, I think a hundred percent it is. I mean, our sense of smell is our most primal sense. And I think it is only natural in the most primitive state of a man and woman to be attracted to a scent that has indole. So a scent that has jasmine in it. Of course, Alien Essence Absolute is not the most common. However, Alien is, and I do think most people have smelled Alien. To me, that really heady feeling that you get when you smell that, that straight up addictive narcotic vibe, I attribute that straight to Indole. Now, I don't personally feel that Alien is a very challenging fragrance at all. I actually think the Jasmine in Alien is something a lot of women would love. But I do think if you took the indole out of the jasmine in Alien, it would just completely fall flat. So it doesn't have to be the darkest scent, of course. It doesn't have to be dark and gloomy to have indole in it. I don't think that Alien is dark and gloomy. 
but I do think that all of the complexity really falls upon that strong indole concentration within Alien. Whether it's synthetic and produced in the lab or actually coming from jasmine oil, who knows, but I do think that it really adds something to the scent. This is the original for women. I really love the scent. I love it more than any of the other juicy fragrances. I don't think I will ever buy another one of the fragrances. I mean, like, I'm not really inclined to do so, but I love this one. I actually think that if you smelled it when you were younger, you know, I smelled it originally when I was in middle school, and you associate, you know, kind of those younger, youthful, maybe even more juvenile times with this scent, I would highly suggest going and trying this out again. The reason I wanted to show it in this indole video is because when you smell it, you do smell that kind of natural offness that is found in white flowers, like in nature. I don't know how they preserved it, but they have it in here and it makes it so addictive to me and it actually makes it so mature to me. It really does. Okay, so I'm not gonna talk too much about these, but I do have Red Door over here, which is white floral galore. And then I have Chanel number no. five, which was the original side eye perfume. And what I mean by that is that when a woman walked by wearing this, people would kind of give a side eye. I mean, I wasn't there at that time, but I'm thinking that's what it was all about. This definitely defied all of those pretty violet type of fragrances at the time. And of course there is Red Door the white floral galore of the 90s, all bottled up. I adore the scent. I just think it's beautiful. But there is this kind of raunchiness, kind of wild spirit inside this one. Putting on bright red lipstick, going out under neon lights, that entire vibe, I really get that from Red Door. Okay, so the very last perfume I'm going to share is Calvin Klein's Secret Obsession because I do get that kind of mustiness in this one. I know that the original Calvin Klein Eternity had a lot of indole, I believe, as well as I believe the original Obsession. This over here is Secret Obsession, and it already has this kind of smoky nature to it coming from the incense, but there is this kind of indolic, musty type of whisper in the back that really draws me in over and over again. If you ever get your nose on any of these fragrances, you know, take a moment, take a whiff, and see if you can pick up on the indole. If you ever come across any of these fragrances or if you already own them, let me know what you think. Have you experienced that kind of indolic, narcotic vibe coming from it? But there are a lot of notes in perfumery that have that kind of animalic touch. You can't just say every time there's a little bit of an off type of scent that it is indole. For example, sometimes oud is said to have a very weird smell to it as well. However, I believe from what I read, uh, indole is not the cause of that type of stench in oud. You know, it's oud's own properties, some other type of chemical thing going on. So you can't blame indole every single time. Before I really wrap everything up, I just wanted to say that Matt from Maleg Perfumes sent me a bunch of samples and I already did a pretty in-depth review over on my Instagram if you want to go check it out. But the reason I mentioned it is because a lot of his scents have this really strong carnal animalic touch to it and I love it. I think he had some type of oil or something that comes from a civet cat and he put them in his different fragrances and let me tell you some of them are very challenging but it is so much fun for my nose to go through and get challenged by these different fragrances. It really helps my nose come alive. I like to think that I'm exercising my receptors and that over time I will be able to uh, truly appreciate fragrances more more and more and on a deeper level. All right, my loves, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It definitely is a little bit different from what I usually do, but I was just so fascinated about this entire topic and I'm really happy that you know, you guys expressed an interest in this type of a video because it let me go out and study and research. And again, like I said, I didn't do any proper researching or anything, but just kind of going through and reading up on all of this, it was really interesting. It really opened my eyes. And I always say this journey that I'm taking, this fragrance journey, like I'm doing it right alongside you guys. I'm not an expert. 
by any means and I really enjoy having you my friends come along with me thank you guys so much for sharing your valuable time with me here today as we sit and talk about indole let me know your thoughts on this entire video so of course if you did enjoy this video or any of my content make sure to give it a big like and also share with a friend have a good one you guys